All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this O1 HTS 2102S, and that's a mouthful. O1 makes a few different models of this particular oscilloscope slash multimeter slash signal generator that have different frequency cutoffs. Some of them are 50 megahertz, 70 megahertz. This is the 100 megahertz model. Uh, we're doing a video on this today because it's become a very popular uh, multimeter oscilloscope combo in the ham radio space, and that's where uh, I tend to hang out. A lot of people are asking questions about it, and today I want to talk about its capabilities as a signal generator. Now, some folks will call a signal generator a function generator, or they'll call it an alternative waveform generator. Um, for the sake of this video, we're just going to call it a signal generator. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. If you have PCB prototyping needs, go ahead and check out PCBWay. PCBWay is a premier services provider for PCB and assembly solutions. Their process makes it easy. Whatever your project requirement entails, PCBWay has something for you, from printed circuit boards, electronic components, and technical parts, turnkey PCB assembly, CNC machining or 3D printing, and even integrated manufacturing and assembly. Go ahead and check them out. Taking a look at the oscilloscope, I wanted to talk about a couple of things real quick. Uh, it's easy to power on. You just push this power on button and it comes on. Now, as I mentioned, it does three different things. So we're going to talk about those briefly. Here you can see that it boots into the last feature that you were using. In this case, we were using the feature for uh, <laughs> called alternative waveform, arbitrary waveform generator or signal generator. And you can see that here. By choosing the mode button, I can switch between the oscilloscope function and I can switch between the multimeter function. Uh, we're going to go back to the uh, signal generator function because that's what we're focusing on today. All three of those components run independently whenever this is on. So what's handy about that is, is that I can use the signal generator to maybe feed a signal into a circuit and then I can use the output of that circuit to go into the oscilloscope feature and then measure uh, the response of that circuit. Uh, that's, that's really cool. And a lot of people use these in the makerspace. Like I, I, I've heard where people have bought this because it is a three in one that is a lot easier than having an oscilloscope and a, um, and a multimeter and a, and a signal generator on your desk. This takes up a lot less space um, and it's easy to move around. It's easy to use and a, it's, a, it's a compact version. And I think that's one of the things uh, or reasons that this is so popular these days. Uh, just quickly, I want to show that you have your two oscilloscope channels, channel one and two here. Here's what we're concerned about is our 50 ohm general out, and this is for the generator, signal generator, not general. On the side, we have a flap here that uh, shows our power. And when I open this up, there we go. When you take a look in there, there's a USB-C plug, and I can plug this into any charging port to charge the batteries in this device. I can also plug this into a computer, and there's some CPS software. We're not going to take a look at that in this video. We may look at it in a different video. And then we here we have a probe compensator for um, calibrating any probes that we need to use. Uh, there, I did a video on the probe uh, for this and how to do that, if you're interested. But I did want to point out this USB-C. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this so it's a little bit easier to read, and then we're going to walk through some of the features and functions of this as a signal generator. All right, I just wanted to take a quick second to take a look at some specifications. I don't want to spend too much time here because everybody goes berserk when we look at specifications. But uh, if you take a look at your frequency output here, you can see the different categories. We have sine, square, ramp, pulse, and arbitrary. The sine wave goes uh, from 0.1 hertz up to 25 megahertz, and uh, that's pretty good. Uh, square wave is only up to 5 megahertz, which is a little bit of a challenge. Ramp only goes to 1 megahertz, pulse 5, and arbitrary 5. Um, this is probably plenty for a lot of people, depending upon what you're doing. Uh, what I've noticed is that in amateur radio space, a lot of times we need to have a signal generated at a little bit higher frequency. Um, one thing I'll say about this device, why I like it, and I think it's pretty cool, the signal generator is probably not its strongest feature. Um, here you can take a look at sampling rate. It's a single channel output. Um, amplitude range is something else I wanted to focus on. Uh, you have 20 millivolts uh, peak to peak through 5 volts peak to peak. Uh, so there's a limitation there as well. Uh, waveform, length, waveform length, I can't speak today. Vertical resolution and output impedance. All right, well, let's continue with the video. Okay, and I'm a little bit impressed with my super zoom functions. This actually looks uh, better than I thought it would. 
So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, here you can see it's just cut off the name at the top. You can see it's the 100 megahertz version. Um, the first thing that you see in the upper corner, let me get my stylus to make this a little bit easier, is that you have an off indicator here, and that tells you that this is not generating a signal or a waveform. Down here, I can go ahead and I can turn that on by pushing that button. This will turn green, and when that happens, then our indicator up here turns green as well, and we are actually outputting a signal. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to walk through some of these controls. So these function buttons here control different menu items that will change depending upon uh, what we're attempting to do. So right now we are looking at a sine wave. I don't know how easy that is to read right there, but um, you can see that it says sine. Actually, let me go in the system real quick and then let's go into display and let's take a look at our brightness and see if we can do anything here. That's going up. We probably want to go in the other direction. There we go. I'm not sure that's going to make a big enough difference for us to, uh, to care about. But uh, now I can go back. And also in system over here, um, you can look, I think it's on page two. You can take a look at this about, and then you can find out your model, your serial number, your version. Uh, sometimes you have to do a firmware update on things like this. Let's go all the way back. So right now we're looking at a sine waveform. And what I can do is, is I can continue to push this and it will change to different ones. So there's our square, there's our ramp. And then when we go here, there's our pulse, which is similar to a square. And then here we are in the arbitrary. Now I can use the Chevron down here, let me move that up a little bit, to switch between these different values or selections. Um, oops. Um, maybe I'm not being honest here. I use, so I can use these up and down arrows to switch between these selections. Um, here we're at 62 kilohertz. Uh, if I wanted to increase this, what I could do is I can use the chevron at the bottom to change the, the frequency of the wave that we're looking at. But using these buttons, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. I can adjust my voltage peak to peak up to a certain limit based off of what we saw when we looked uh, at the specifications. <clears throat> and then uh, I can come down here. I can set an offset, or this says right here, uh, exponential fall. I can switch between various, and it's not that button, it's this button. I can switch between various different waveforms uh, that are already pre-programmed in here. It has a number of arbitrary waveforms. And you can see I'm just cycling through those right now. Um, there's a rising stair, I believe is what they call that, or stair up. And we can pick those. We're going to hook this up to an oscilloscope so we can see how it performs. And then we also want to test some of the thresholds, like the sine wave threshold, for example. But what I wanted to show you is, is that using these controls, I've got a cable. And don't hate because of all the adapters. I'm going to put this on here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to use the mode button. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to the oscilloscope. And what I can do is I can just hit auto and then that should bring up that particular waveform. Now, in another video, we might take a little bit of a deeper dive on how to operate this, but it's not going to be today. I can go back to our mode and I can go back to here. Uh, for example, and then I can pick different waveforms and let's go back to the oscilloscope and uh, just do a quick auto on that. And then you can see the various different waveforms. We're only looking at one channel right now. Um, but anyhow, that is uh, a feature or a function that I wanted to cover here. Let's go ahead and take some time and set this up to oscilloscope and we'll be right back. All right, folks, and we're back and we have the O1 uh, multimeter oscilloscope uh, function signal uh, arbitrary waveform generator plugged in to our Regal to an MSO 5407 multimeter. And I have the display port going out through HDMI so we can capture it on the computer. Uh, I also have in this top camera up here is we have the display of the O1. Uh, hopefully everybody can see that okay. Uh, this is probably about as good as it's going to get. Now what you can see here on the O1 is that we are set for 5 megahertz, uh, which you can see in the counter in the upper right hand corner of the Regal screen. Um, below that we have the amplitude set for three volts peak to peak. Now down in the lower left hand corner of the Regal screen you can see that the voltage peak to peak that we're reading down there is 2.84 
give or take. Uh, I'm inclined to go with the Regal. I think it's a little bit of a better device, and I trust it a little bit more than I do the O1. I'm not calling it particularly bad, but we are off by around, uh, I don't know, 0.13 volts in terms of that voltage peak to peak. So what I want to do is I want to actually come over here and see what happens if we go to 4 volts peak to peak. And there we go. You can see the amplitude change on the screen. And uh, we're reading 3.81. Let's go to 5. And uh, we're reading 4.7. So we're getting a little bit more drift, it seems, the higher that we go in our voltage. Um, I believe 5 volts peak to peak was the max that this could do. So let's see what happens when we go to 6. And it won't let me go up. Let's go back down to something to 1 volt peak to peak. And um, that looks to be a little bit closer. But again, it's still off by a little bit. Uh, where were we at three, I think is where we were. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to here and this uh, device is supposed to be able to put out a sine wave at 25 megahertz. If you take a look at this, um, that sine wave looks pretty good. Uh, I would, wouldn't really complain about that. But remember, we're at 20% of its threshold. So let's see if I can get the buttons right. Here we are at six, seven. Eight, and I'm just going to go up to, let's go to 10. Oops, drop down to 10. Um, when we see this, our, our voltage peak to peak actually goes down. So we're at 2.688. Uh, I think we were at 2.8 before, but my memory's not so good. Let's go to 15 and let's keep an eye on that voltage peak to peak and see what happens. The signal still looks pretty good. Here we are at 15 and uh, it looks like the voltage peak to peak went up to 2.8. Oh, I hit this. Straighten it back up. Let's go back to, let's go up to 20 uh, megahertz. And then there, our voltage peak to peak actually went above three, um, which is a little bit of an interesting uh, turn of events. I didn't expect that. Let's go ahead and go to 25 and see what we get. There we are, 25, and our voltage is a three, about three and a half, 3.6 volts peak to peak. And uh, we're only supposed to be at three. Um, which is interesting. I'll tell you what, let's go down and let's go up to five volts and see what happens. Five volts peak to peak. Let me go ahead and reset the, uh, the oscilloscope. There we go. The sine wave still looks pretty good. Let me turn this menu off. So I don't really have any, compl dang on, let me turn this menu off. I don't have any complaints about the quality of, of the sine wave. You're actually starting to see a little bit of distortion up towards the top of those peaks. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go back in here and see how much higher than 25 megahertz we can go from a frequency standpoint. Uh, here we go. And it's, it's not allowing us to do that. Let's back down to 15. Let's change the waveform and see if we can see something different. So this is supposed to be the square wave at five megahertz, which is its max. And we are set at five volts peak to peak. Let's go ahead and uh, get an auto on this. Oh boy, that's not exactly as clean as we would want. So what we can do here is, is that we can go down to our amplitude and adjust that and see if we can clean up this, uh, this square wave any. And uh, it's not, it doesn't look like it's getting any cleaner to me. I don't know about to you. So I think that the challenge that we have here is actually the megahertz threshold uh, in terms of frequency. So let's go back up. Uh, here we are at three. Let's go take a look at our frequency and uh, drop this down a little bit. So once we go down to, it looks like one megahertz. Um, we still have a little bit of some artifacting in there. Now, that could be the cable that we're using to connect this. I know that when we connect this up to the internal oscilloscope on the O1, we don't see this level of distortion. I think that's going to wrap up this video, and I want to say thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.